It is so important that after the stress of your GCSEs, you are spending some time to relax the summer before moving into year 12. And I hope you've had a chance to do that. At the same time, it is really also important to note that three months is a long time for your brain to lose knowledge in all your subjects, but especially physics. So over time, if you're not practicing that knowledge regularly, um, you will have found you forget things. Okay. Now that's one of the hardest things about starting year 12 is getting back into those routines. And also the content is obviously harder for A-levels. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips for how you can make that transition from GCSE to A-level as good as it possibly can be. Now the main thrust of this bit of the video is talking about knowing GCSE content as well as you can because it does come up at A-level and um, it'd be worth less marks but it is assumed in lots of topics. So let's have a look at what you can do to keep your physics brain ticking over. Now, something I always give to my students is a copy of the book called Head Start to A-Level Physics or Head Start to Physics, given uh, produced by CGP. Now, this contains the hardest parts of the GCSE course and an introduction to some of the concepts at A-Level. Um, there's a similar book, um, which is a daily workout in A-Level Physics, produced by Physics Online. That should say online, um, which is a daily workout in skills you'll need. Uh, Isaac Physics is a really challenging uh, kind of problem-solving website that you should make use of as well if you really want to stretch yourself. Now, over the summer, I'm also going to produce some videos based around skills um, that you definitely need in A-level, so like rearranging formulae and equations, trigonometry, and things like standard form, prefixes, significant figures, um, and all those things that will just be assumed at A-level, um, and you need to be able to succeed by learning those properly. Now, something else that's also a good idea to use the summer for um, is as well as knowledge, but getting really inspired by your subject. So in physics, for example, understanding it is one thing, um, but getting an interest around the course, maybe into those sides of the course that you didn't cover much at GCSE and would like to know more about. So I've got some recommendations of books, YouTube channels, magazines, things that will help you do that. Um, now, these ones I won't come as a surprise to my students because I mention them a lot but Veritasium is fantastic for physics and maths content also general science mm -hmm. Kirkusakt which I can never say um, 60 symbols is a lot of degree level um, and number 5 is great for maths um, films they're kind of classics uh, Interstellar Oppenheimer Theory of Everything The Story of Stephen Hawking um, and a TV series uh, called Three Body Problem uh, which uh, I'll talk about the books a little bit later uh, so those are things you could do if you don't in the mood for anything that hard work you can still kind of uh, explore ideas around physics by those kind of YouTube videos and and TV shows. Now thinking further ahead then, if you're starting at A-levels um, this year, uh, your 2026 will be when you leave sick form um, and thinking about what you're going to do. Are you going to go to university, graduate, what degree you're going to do, what courses might you be doing in the future? Um, this long summer is a really good chance to get yourself some focus, get yourself some motivation um, by looking at what might you want to apply for and what might universities look for on their forms. If you're academic, um, uh, applying to a really academic course like to do with physics or maths, um, they're going to look less at kind of extracurricular, more academic interests so they're going to look for you and your personal statement be talking about articles you read for example up-to-date physics in physics world and the new scientist now both of these cost money there is some free content online um, but you can definitely find enough in there to be able to talk about and kind of really spike your interest for physics and science in general in terms of books there's Storm in a Teacup um, by Helen Chertsky, um, which is kind of a general science book, but it's fantastic, um, it's suitable for all levels, really. Um, I really like a book called Paradox, which is a really interesting book by Jim Al-Khalili, lots of kind of confounding physics theories in there. Um, there's a book called Quantum Theory Can't Hurt You, which kind of starts you off on the theory, idea of quantum theory, which is kind of this mind-bending uh, ideas in physics. Uh, Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking is actually quite high level, but if you're really up for a challenge, that's a good book to read. Uh, my favourite fiction book um, at the minute is called The Three Body uh, Problem. Uh, it's a trilogy by Liu Cixin, uh, which is um, really interesting, like lots about space, lots about um, physics uh, beyond what you might know already.